Hi, this is Ken Mary from Flotsam and Jetsam, and you're listening to the Brutally Delicious Podcast with Bruce Moore. So check it out. I think what I was going to say is I think the last time I saw you was, uh, I mean, the last show I saw probably, well, one of them was you guys on 70,000 Tons. Yep. That was like just before this whole thing shut down. Yep. And actually, that was our last official show that we played at together. Really? Yep. So it's over a year then. Way over a yep. year. Yeah, it's, it's a year and a half since we played. Yeah. Wow. What's it like being having all that time off? I mean, obviously, you worked on the record and I'm imagining there was different writing processes for this. But what was that whole experience like? Well, it was pretty weird because we did have in Arizona at the time we were making this record, we had one of the worst outbreaks um, in the entire world. We had in terms of infections per capita, Arizona was like one of the worst hit places in the world. And uh, it it did affect us personally. AK's mother was was in the hospital for eight weeks and she almost didn't make it. Uh, We had two guys in the band get sick. One of them took about five weeks to recover fully. And then another guy was sick for about five days. Um, we had to have photos taken, you know, where people were sick and, and we had to like, you know, socially distance during the photos and, um, for the recording, for instance, you know, while AK was recording his vocals, you know, we did that at my studio, you know, which is where we recorded the drums and the vocals and that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, I was in the control room and he was in the tracking room and we'd look at each other through the glass and wave hello, you know, and and that's all so weird. Right. That's how we would see each other, you know, because we all have elderly parents we're trying to protect. And, you know, it was, it, you know, it was a weird time and, and it was strange. It was, it obviously felt strange. We were very frustrated. And I think some of the anger and angst and frustration and some of the sadness and all of these things, all of these emotions were just kind of poured into this record. And I think honestly, it probably made for one of the most angry, aggressive, Uh, And maybe one of the, you know, I I think it's one of the best Flotsam albums ever, in my opinion, you know, and I've been a fan for years, like my favorite albums are the first two albums, and the last three albums. I love the I love the last three and the first two. Right. And, and, uh, and so it's so I know it's weird for me to say this as part of the band, but you know, I, I I normally can't listen to a record that I've been involved in the production in for, you know, when you by the time it's out. I've heard the songs, you know, over 200 times a piece and, you know, to, to have an album completed where I can still take the CD and, and enjoy listening to it in my car is a very unusual thing. And that's the way this album is for me. That's good. And I know, uh, I know we were just talking about you know, this whole pandemic thing. I think metal and you can correct me if I'm wrong, might be one of the only genres where you can get away with, channeling all that anger and make it a cathartic experience at the end of the day. Right. Absolutely. It was a complete cathartic experience. (laughs) You know, it's like, I think we all poured everything, you know, that we were feeling into the record. And I, you know, I think it made for a a very powerful album. I mean, there's songs that, you know, that, uh, you know, AK wrote cry for the dead and you just listen to those lyrics and it's like, Oh my gosh, you know, like very moving lyrics on this album. And, uh, and a very powerful record. Um, you know, I'm very, very proud of it, as you could probably tell. Oh, yeah. Or, you know, it's just it's just sometimes you do records and, you know, we were so worried about it because the end of chaos was we we really poured ourselves into that album. And we thought that was like an amazingly strong record. And we were like, how in the heck are we going to even, you know, you know, we have to at least equal this record. And so. Yeah. You know, that was our goal when we started. We like we were like, we got to we got to at least get as good as the end of chaos. And then, you know, I feel like we topped it. You know, I feel like right. we actually went beyond it. And and it seems like the response from the press and and radio and everybody that's heard it so far seems to have that same response. Like, wow, you guys really found another gear and took it up a notch. And so, you know, for us, that's just like, you know, that was amazing. Oh, we yeah. Were, you know, we were concerned. <laughs> yeah. So do you find it, this is record 14, I believe I saw. Do you find it difficult not writing the same record when it comes to sitting down to write a record? Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. Um, I, I do think it is, 
uh, certainly a concern. You know, you have to recognize like, oh, we already did that. We already did that. Um, and and you, you certainly want to grow and change. And at the same time, you know, you don't want to alienate the people from the things that right. make flotsam flotsam. Right. And, and so it is a fine line that you walk. I mean, you, you we're, we're somewhat aware of it. But on the last two albums in particular, we took a new tack, which was really, you know, don't worry about anything just worry about making music that you love and that moves you personally and i'm talking about all the writers in the band you know mm -hmm. which is all which is all of us we all write and we all contribute to the writing and um you know in that process you know i the whole idea was like let's not put one song on the album that we don't all love you know if we all love every song on the album then we win and uh you know it's it's pretty funny we did that with the end of chaos and we did that with this album and so far, it seems like the trajectory of the band is really moving forward. And um, I, I just think that's an interesting, it's an interesting development. Um, I was just doing an interview where the guy said, you know, what would you tell to a young Ken Mary as far as advice? And I, and I, I said, well, I would tell him to follow his heart and don't worry about, you know, radio or what the label says or what the other people say, you know, just do music that moves you because, I think when you do that, something kind of magical happens, you know, like if, if the mu music moves you, then hopefully, you know, there's a few million people out there that agree with you. And it'll connect. Do you, yeah. um, shoot, I just lost my train of thought. Um, I just totally, no I just totally blipped out there for a second. We were talking about. Yeah, we're just we're just talking about the music moving, you know, us personally. And if it makes oh, I know what I was going to say. I got it. Thank you. You jarred my memory again. Do you, sure. So if you're only picking the ones that you guys are all loving, are there like a bunch of other ones that just get clipped along the way? Or are you just writing those eight and you just love them? No, we there's a bunch that got clipped. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, there's a lot of material that's sitting kind of on the, on the, on the back, you know, burner. And, and usually there was something wrong with the song that we may or may not be able to go fix. Like there were certain songs that didn't make it, that almost didn't make it on this record. Um, I'll give you a good, for instance, blood in the water was a song that, um, you know, AK had, and, and for some reason he wasn't really feeling anything, you know, it wasn't really moving him. Um, so I just took it and wrote, you know, the lyrics, and the melody and, uh, you know, and, and it turned out, you know, where we played it for everybody and, and, and we already had pretty much the whole album done and, uh, and Mike Gilbert and AK were like, man, we got to put this on the album. You know, this is, this is a crushing song, you know, we've got to include it. And we already had so many killer songs. Um, and so it was, it was funny, you know, that, you know, everybody recognized, wow, this is a killer track. We, we have to include it. So, yeah, there are songs that don't make it. You know, that song almost didn't make it onto the record. And, and it, it, you know, by, by chance, you know, it did. And it ended up becoming the title track. So it's like one of those things where, you know, it's, it's a very interesting process. But I think the cool thing is, is that everybody just wanted great songs on the album and they didn't really care. And a lot of times in bands, you get a lot of infighting. You know, yeah. one guy wants his song. The other guy wants his song. I think in this band, it's truly a team effort. And, you know, there's there's so many different writing patterns like, you know, AK wrote songs with Steve and and Steve wrote songs with uh, or I wrote songs with Steve and AK and I wrote songs with Steve and and Mike Gilbert and I wrote songs and Mike Gilbert and AK wrote songs and then Mike, a, Mike, AK and I wrote songs. So, <laughs> right. so there was like there's like huge combinations of different people working together to create stuff. And somehow it all still sounds like flotsam. So it was a very wild chemistry that we, we kind of, we kind of feel like we sort of stumbled on. That's excellent. What's the, uh, I know with things opening up now, what's like your plan for the, for shows or any kind of live events, or is that not a thing yet? No, it is. We're going to try to go out uh, we're going to do, we're trying to do a two week run in the U S in August and just kind of see how that goes. If it goes, then we may extend it. Um, we're, we're, you know, we're obviously paying close attention to what's sure. going on in India. India is having a really bad outbreak right now. Right. And this is, that, that's really more of a second wave. You know, the virus had already been through there once already. So we're keeping, you know, kind of an eye. I talked to somebody in the UK and they said the Indian variants already over there. Oh, really? So, 
Yeah, so we don't know exactly what's going to go on, but we do have shows scheduled in August. And then in Europe, um, we're scheduled uh, in 2022 and obviously all the festivals and everything. But, you know, we're certainly hopeful. I mean, if you look at, you know, the the uh, vaccines, you know, we're looking in Arizona and a lot of people have been vaccinated and our cases are are very, very low right now. So hopefully that continues and there's not something new that shows up on the horizon. I mean, that's, you know, our, our ideally we're going to get back to touring and, and playing shows and get back to our, you know, we were doing, you know, like eight week runs instead of, right. you know, two week runs. So hopefully we can get back to doing that kind of thing soon. You think it's going to be difficult to get back out after a year and a half of inactivity? I don't think so. I mean, I do think that we're going to have to get in shape. I mean, I, you know, we had, I, I've had to pretty much stay in shape this whole time just to do the record and, um, you know, do the different things that I do. I, I kind of have to stay in shape, but in terms of, of, as a band, you know, I will tell you this flotsam playing flotsam music is, it's not like you could not play for a year and then just jump up on stage and play these songs. Right. I mean, you have to totally be in shape. You know, AK's got to get his voice in shape. The guitar players have to get their riffs in shape because, you know, it's it's a workout playing this stuff. And, and it requires a tremendous amount of energy. And, um, you know, if, you, if, you're, if you're rusty, it's just not going to work. So um, I will say this. Yes, we will, we will definitely have to make sure we're all in shape before we hit the road. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you got to get your tour legs back at some point, right? Yep, absolutely. Do you ever imagine you'd still be doing this? I mean, 14 albums later, however many years that translates to. I mean, I remember listening to lots of way back in the day, dating myself. But do you ever imagine you'd still be doing this? Honestly, not really. I mean, because when you're young, you always think, well, you know, our career, our careers will be over by the time we're, you know, 25 or right. 30. You know, <laughs> like you're always, because right. that, that's kind of the way it was for most music. I mean, if you look at, you know, pop stars and all the one hit wonders and all the people that have like one record and then they're done. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's tons and tons and tons of examples in the music business of that. So when somebody says, do you, would you, you know, would you expect to be doing this, you know, this at this late, you know, time in your career? And the answer is no, not really, but we're really happy. I mean, what we're looking at is, um, and I've said this in other interviews, but, you know, if you look at Motorhead, for instance, you know, they're a band that, they were always around. They were always kind of iconic, but they really didn't have a big impact or a big boost in their career till the last few years of their career. And so we're kind of looking at it like maybe we can pull a motorhead and, you, you know, go. and and have a, a career where, you know, we have a bigger career at the end of the career than we did at the beginning. You know, that's what we're hope. That's what we're hoping for. That's fantastic. But I feel like you guys have always had sort of a. I don't want to say cult following, but a solid following in the underground for sure. Right. Yeah, absolutely. The band's definitely had an underground following, but you know, hopefully, you know, we're going to expand that following. It certainly seems like we're doing that with the last right. three albums. I mean, the last three albums in particular seem to be like a little bit of a rebirth for the band. And, you know, people are just, you know, excited about the music and about the new songs and about the new albums. And, you know, it's almost like you're a new artist kind of. So you know, we're hoping to just continue carrying that energy. And like I said, you know, hopefully we can pull a motorhead. <laughs> That's great. So I've got one more for you. What's it like playing shows where people like myself are bringing their kids to the shows? I imagine you're getting like multiple generations, right? Yeah, we are, you know, and to that degree, you know, I mean, if you listen to Flotsam lyrics, you know, things are generally very clean. I mean, there's really not a lot of you know, uh, there's not a lot of vulgarity and stuff. So most kids, I think, would be fine, you know, at a Flotsam show. I mean, they're probably going to hear an F-bomb or two from AK, you right. know. But uh, I'd say for the most part, you know, it's it's not like going to, a you know, a Ramstein show or something like that, right. you know. It's going to be it's going to be fairly, fairly friendly. So, you know, we don't really have a problem with with the generational thing. As a matter of fact, you know, we do see that. We do see people yeah. bringing fa fairly young kids to the shows and stuff. And, you know, it's always a little bit of a shock because you kind of go like, well, you know, make sure they wear earplugs, you know, right. because, you know, it's it's not something, you know, when you're when you're a kid and you're 10 or 11 years old, you know, you don't want to be uh, exposed to these high volumes right. without some hearing protection. But um, other than that, you know, I, I, I think uh, I, I feel good. I feel good about it. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool that you've been around long enough where, and you've got a fan base that's strong enough that they're bringing, 
you know, the next generation to you and turning them on to, you know, great music. Absolutely. That's uh, that's always interesting to me. And I see that with some of the, you know, the other bigger bands as well. And I'm bringing my kids to shows for the last few years and it's the same sort of, well, not last year, but you know what I mean? Sure. It's the same sort of thing. And it's kind of cool, you know, bringing them to that sort of stuff. And it you're is. right. And you're right about the vulgarity and stuff. I mean, you might be one of the few exceptions I can think of that aren't, you know, dropping F bombs or dealing with really, really, really dark subject matter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, exactly. We're not uh, a band. You know, I, I think if you look at our lyrics, they're generally very thoughtful and and very um, thought provoking. So, yeah. uh, you know, I, I think that's the you know that's a good thing. I think for and I think it's a good thing for for young people too to 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 think about things and think about their world and where it's headed and what's going on in it. And I think that's important. Awesome, Ken. That is all I have. Did I miss anything you want to cover? Well, I'd just like to say, you know, to all our people, you know, all our fans and, and certainly the people that are, uh, you know, listening to your show that, you know, we, we hope that you are all safe and healthy and happy. And we certainly hope to see you very soon on tour. Thank you for taking the time. I really appreciate it. Stay no safe. problem. Stay, stay safe. So out there. Yeah. Stay safe. And I hope to catch you somewhere again here in the U.S. Thanks so much, Bruce. And oh, yeah, I hope to see you soon. Be well, my friend. Thanks. You too. Bye-bye. Bye bye.